tonight, when every minute counts. She didn't deserve to die. The untold story from veteran paramedics. They're not in it for what's right for the patient. It needs to be investigated. The culture needs to change. Emails questioning life and death decisions. Why did they travel so far? Why? Documents uncovered showing altered response times. A problem? Of course it is. It's a major problem. And a hospital forced to respond. You're saying you've done nothing wrong. I've done nothing wrong. I take care of patients. Tonight, Andrea's final ride, a culture in question. Now from downtown Denver, Chief Investigative Reporter Tony Kovaleski. Tonight our focus, decisions made by leaders inside that building. Good evening. When you dial 911 in Denver, facing a life and death situation, you probably expect decisions focused on what is best for you or your loved one. The fastest response time, the closest appropriate hospital. But what our investigative team has uncovered during the past six months calls into question those expectations. Now, it's important to establish from the very beginning here that Denver Health strongly disagrees with what we've reported and what you're about to watch. We begin with the story of 11-year-old Andrea Plunkett, an emergency call five years ago, and details of Denver Health's response that were not shared with her mom until we uncovered a telling email. 911, what is the address of your emergency? My daughter deserved it better. They are images and moments in time Andrea Plunkett's mom will never forget. She deserved better, and she can still be here. She provided us these pictures from the day an SUV collided with her daughter. She wants everyone to know what happened, and Leah Plunkett wants to know why. Two humans made bad decisions that day and took a child from this world. She's talking about this decision to bypass a nearby hospital and instead drive more than 17 minutes to Denver Health. In route to Denver Health following medical. Why did they travel so far? Why? She has questions about what Denver 7 has uncovered in this email from a Denver firefighter, what we found in this paramedic patient care report, and what we discovered in this video from a body camera. She didn't deserve to die. She was an incredible little human. Everything changed on the afternoon of May 22nd, 2016. Right now, she is not conscious, but she is breathing. That's the voice of a Sheridan police officer. This is body camera video obtained by Denver 7 Investigates. It raises questions about decisions by Denver Health paramedics. So she's most likely going to be transported to Swedish. That police officer clearly knew Swedish Medical Center was the closest level one trauma center, just 2.2 miles away. And Andrea clearly needed level one care in a hurry. Instead, the paramedic crew chose to drive her three times farther, 6.6 .6 miles away to Denver Health. I wanted to know what took so long for my daughter to get medical care. Why does it take 20 minutes to get somebody life-saving blood and oxygen to their brain. Every second of that was killing her. Hospital reports and body camera video confirm the following. It took paramedics 10 minutes and 16 seconds to arrive to help Andrea. The national standard is less than nine minutes. Paramedics then spent five minutes and 40 seconds on scene. And then instead of taking her to Swedish, just a couple minutes away, they spent 17 minutes and 28 seconds driving to Denver Health. What ultimately took her life was the lack of oxygen to her brain. Why 20 minutes? Why over 20 minutes? There's a hospital five minutes down the street with a trauma one center. And Andrea's mom was not the only one questioning that decision. This one is the last picture of us together that I'll ever get to have. Inside sources pointed Denver 7 investigates to this email, written the day Andrea was hit by the SUV. Hey, who's going to the hospital? I can. 
The email includes another incident involving Denver Health ambulances passing up Swedish Hospital to take a critical patient to Denver Health. You're going Swedish? Denver Health. That was a police officer questioning where the paramedics were taking Andrea. The email sent more than five years ago includes this telling line. The crew was very upset and they stated this keeps happening in Sheridan where they do not go to the closest level one hospital. They have stated this is the fourth time they recall something this significant happening. You've read that email. What did it say to you? Murphy Robinson is Denver's deputy mayor and executive director of public safety. Those emails said that we have a very frustrated group of firefighters who believe that something must change. This is shortly after Denver fire pulled up. And here's another problem. We also showed Denver's deputy mayor this report. Take a close look. Paramedics claim they only spent 16 seconds attending to Andrea before transporting her to Denver Health. The body camera video tells a different story, showing five minutes and 40 seconds at the crash site. Combined with an extended response time and the decision to bypass Swedish, in all, a total of more than 30 minutes for Andrea to get to an emergency room. I think the, the facts of the video aren't accurately reflected in this specific report. A problem? Of course it is. It's a major problem. Robinson now says his team will dig deeper into the culture and performance of Denver Health's paramedics division. I will pledge to Andrea and every other person in the city and county of Denver that um, I will be reviewing this incident. I will be reviewing and making sure that we have paid close attention to um, how we respond, but also making sure that when we find incidences where there can be improvements, I will make those improvements. If you could talk to the chief executive officer of Denver Health right now, what would you say to her? I would want her to explain her policy. It's unfair. It's not right. You're going Swedish? Denver Health. Like, I can't even explain my emotions right now because for on one side, I'm sad and I'm upset that my baby's not with me. On the other, I'm raging. Denver Health CEO declined to answer the questions raised by Andrea's mother, electing only to release a statement that included, Denver Health was the most rapidly accessible and most appropriate pediatric trauma center for this child. You're aware of the conflict. You've seen the emails we've read. What's going on here? When we return, how the man in charge of paramedics at Denver Health responds to the accusations and the controversy. Insider emails from Denver firefighters led us to Andrea's story, but credible firefighters are not the only ones questioning the culture inside Denver Health's paramedics division. Our investigation continues now with former paramedics speaking out for the very first time and telling emails from a major metro area hospital. Code 10 for a 52-year-old male chest pain. If we don't save the patient, we have all failed. The system's failing. It's a job where every second counts. They're not in it for what's right for the patient. Code 10 for a 66-year-old female. The ego and the money. It's like, this is our county. You can't tell us what to do. They make critical decisions where minutes can be the difference between life and death. There is no doubt in my mind that they know this is going on. Why are you no longer a Denver Health paramedic? It was destroying me as a person. You are hearing testimonials from two veteran paramedics combined more than three decades of experience. Are you concerned you could face retaliation? I'm sure I will. Were you ever questioned about a decision to bring a level one trauma patient to the closest hospital instead of Denver Health? Yes, by my superiors and the medical direction team. Code 10 or level one trauma patients are the most critically injured. Generally, the patients needing the fastest route to an emergency room and a doctor. Did you get in trouble for taking a critically injured patient to the closest hospital instead of Denver Health? Yes, I did. Once, twice? More than that. What would they say? Why didn't you take them to Denver Health? You know all level one trauma goes to Denver Health. There's two kinds of paramedics who work at Denver Health. 
Paramedics who take all code 10 trauma to Denver Health and ones who used to work there. Wow. What are you saying? I'm saying if you were the paramedic who continually took trauma somewhere else, they would find a reason for you not to continue your employment at Denver Health. And paramedics are not the only ones questioning that culture. Engine 29, respond to a gunshot wound. Multiple informed sources point to this call for a paramedic unit on May 11th of this year. 10 East DVR, the UC Health ER. Denver 7 Investigates has learned on this day, two men walked into this medical facility in Green Valley Ranch. Both had gunshot wounds. A doctor inside recognized the gunshot trauma for one of the victims was too serious for his facility and called 911. Two parties walk in with everybody. A Denver Health Ambulance responded. We are told the doctor suggested the paramedic transport the victim to UC Health, the closest hospital just seven miles away. Instead, for some unknown reason, the paramedic chose to drive the gunshot victim to Denver Health, more than 19 miles away. I believe the paramedic who made that decision was instructed, encouraged, trained, bullied into going to Denver Health. For that case, uh, there was concern about where the patient was transported. Dr. Danny Wilner confirms his hospital, UC Health, did raise questions about the decision to bypass the closest hospital and transport that gunshot victim back to Denver Health. This is a patient safety issue, and we know that time is important for trauma patients. We know that the farther you transport someone, the less likely they're going to have a good outcome from a traumatic injury. In fact, through a public records request, Denver 7 has learned UC Health has questioned transport decisions for level one trauma patients by Denver Health more than a dozen times in the past nine months. Why would a paramedic drive 10 or more miles further and avoid a closer level one trauma center? Because if I transport the patient to Denver Health, no matter what the patient outcome is, I won't get second-guessed by my medical direction. If I transport them to another facility, it will be scrutinized and reviewed a lot closer. Are you surprised by what we found? Nope. Not at all. All level one trauma goes to Denver Health. You will go by other level one trauma centers to go to Denver Health. If not, you were questioned as to why you did not take that patient to Denver Health. No Denver paramedic has ever faced discipline for not bringing a trauma patient to Denver Health. Ever. Ever. Dr. Kevin McVaney's title is medical director for Denver Health Paramedics. Why would paramedics tell us that's not the case? There has never been a circumstance where a paramedic has been disciplined for taking a trauma patient to another hospital. I wouldn't change a thing about how we equip and take care of our trauma patients. You're saying you've done nothing wrong. I've done nothing wrong. I take care of patients. But the paramedics medical director did admit a mistake was made with that May 11th transport of the gunshot victim. This email obtained by Denver 7 written by Dr. McVaney reads, my reply to UC Health on this one was that it was not the best destination. We should discuss and prep if we think this is going to go media. The list of all the emails from UC Health, about a dozen, questioning your decision to bypass their hospital. How many of those concerns were valid? Half, 10%, none? In my assessment, less than half of those concerns were valid. We also question this email, also authored by Dr. McVaney, an internal response to questions raised in emails by UC Health. It reads, I don't want to overemphasize these because I don't want the you to set our agenda. What did that say? It says that outside emails don't dictate how we provide care. I don't want any outside force dictating how we take care of patients in Denver. Who did you work to? Do you think Denver Health believes that they can't be stopped? Yes, they do. They, they play by their own rules. What would you say to Dr. McVaney right now? Dr. McVaney, do the right thing. Step outside of 
the political nature of what's going on here and do the right things for the patient. Hand the fight with one. Disappointed that this issue has come to light. I'm deeply disappointed if any of our paramedics thought that our goal was anything other than how to best take care of our patients. When we return... What made you reach out to our investigative team? Another paramedic. The fact that those practices are still going on today. Welcome back. So what you've watched to this point is a collection of insiders and documentation that shows Andrea's final ride five years ago was not an anomaly. As we continue to uncover more inside information, more informed sources step forward. 911. When you were there, I'm guessing like many, you were a proud member of one of the most prestigious paramedic divisions in the country. Absolutely, everyone wants to work for Denver Health. She spent nearly a decade in these ambulances, driving at high speeds, trying to save lives. What ultimately made you walk away? It's not a healthy environment. Since leaving Denver Health, she has found another job as a paramedic. She's asked us to disguise her voice and her appearance because she still fears retaliation. When you watched that story, that example, what did it say to you? I done the same thing when I worked for Denver Health. Right now, she is not conscious, but she is breathing. I felt for those paramedics. They were doing exactly what they've been taught and told to do. And I know for sure, had they not done that, they would have gotten a talking to. You're going Swedish? Denver Health. I guess I'm not surprised, but still saddened at the same time that we're not putting what's in the best interest of the patient first. We're still putting the best interest of Denver Health first. During her nearly decade of work at Denver Health, like others, she recalls receiving pressure from upper managers after making a decision to take a critically injured patient to the closest appropriate level one trauma center. I had a gunshot wound to the head out in the southeast corner of Denver and I transported this gentleman to Swedish, which is a level one trauma center. And after the call, I received a phone call from a supervisor asking me why I made that choice instead of going back to Denver Health. Did that pressure change the way you made decisions in the future? Absolutely. I became that yes person for the company, did everything for them according to what they wanted. Throughout our reporting during the past six months, Denver Health has continued to strongly defend the culture inside its paramedics division. Earlier, we detailed how it took 33 minutes from the start of the 911 call until Andrea arrived at Denver Health. Medical professionals and credible national studies provide the reasons why every minute matters. You're going Swedish? Denver Health. Experts will tell you it's virtually impossible to know the true impact of the decision that day to bypass Swedish Medical Center and drive Andrea more than six miles, more than 17 minutes to Denver Health. It needs to be investigated. We need to look into it and understand exactly what's going on. But medical professionals and medical studies will also tell you that in a life and death trauma situation, every minute matters. The sooner we get the patient to a hospital, the better the outcome potentially is. This veteran paramedic spent two decades running emergency calls at Denver Health. The longer that happens, the worse it is. And studies support his position. This article in the Journal of the American Medical Association includes, distance from the injury scene to the nearest trauma center is a strong geographic determinant of injury mortality. Another study on motor vehicle fatality rates in Pennsylvania found increasing distance to the nearest trauma center is associated with increasing fatalities. What people need to understand is that patients who are injured in, in a traumatic accident, we need to get them to a trauma center as quickly as possible. Dr. Danny Wilner has years of experience inside the emergency room at UC Health. We know that the farther you transport someone, the less likely they're gonna have a good outcome from a traumatic injury. The best thing to do for our patients is to get them to the most rapidly accessible trauma center every time. After the break, the president of Denver's city council. Reaction to what we reported? Very, very concerning. I would like to get to the bottom of it.
Welcome back. We've heard from Denver's deputy mayor promising a thorough review of the facts we've uncovered. Now, more pressure, this time from the president of Denver City Council. It's 4.36 in the morning, September 28th of last year. 3.14, I'll be following the first bus to Denver Hill. The man inside the ambulance in front of this police car survived a serious car crash. His passenger died. The ambulance is driving code 10, lights and sirens, the highest priority call. On the ramp westbound towards I-70. It's another example of a controversial culture living inside Denver Health's paramedics division. We just rolled up on an accident. Uh, we're not involved, but it was accident. And the questions center on decisions made here in the minutes before the ambulance started driving westbound to Denver Health. Where are they taking him? Uh, are you guys going to university? Uh, Denver Health. Denver Health. That brief exchange exposes the heart of this issue. They're going to Denver Health? That's where they're going. Why transport a seriously injured patient to Denver Health more than 14 miles away, a drive that took more than 17 minutes, when another qualified level one hospital was only four miles away. They're going to Denver Health? That's where they're going. University is closer. Why? Why would we be doing that? She's the president of Denver City Council, Stacy Gilmore, questioning why paramedics chose not to take that seriously injured patient to UC Health, the closest level one trauma center. What did you take from the tone and the questions that were asked? They were questioning the objective. They, they didn't agree with it. It seemed odd that they were gonna go to a different facility when there was one so close. Does Denver Health need to explain this decision? I think they should. Reaction to what we reported? Very concerning. I would like to get to the bottom of it. The president of Denver City Council represents the city's 11th district located in northeast Denver. She says it's a diverse district with a strong Latino and black population. It's the district where we discovered the concerning decisions on that gunshot wound and the critical car crash. What if senior leadership at Denver Health ultimately say we're not going to change anything? Is that acceptable? No. No. Because you are by taking that stance, quite possibly putting black and brown people at a greater risk than the rest of the population. We wanted to raise those points to Denver Health CEO Robin Wittenstein. We wanted to ask her if she plans to make changes to the culture that has produced serious questions from paramedics, medical professionals, and now the president of Denver City Council. Our multiple requests were declined. If Denver Health CEO says we're not going to answer questions in front of this camera, is that acceptable? No, because it's Denver taxpayers who are putting money into these facilities. They deserve to have answers to understand if, God forbid, something life-changing happened to a loved one that they weren't going to go on a joy ride. So now more than five years after Andrea's final ride, we are left with a conflict and a clash of credibility. Do you believe Denver Health's position that it has done nothing wrong? Do you wonder why the hospital's CEO refuses to answer questions brought to light by former paramedics and Andrea's mom? Or do you believe the testimonials from more than a half dozen former paramedics? Do you believe the emails, documents, and data our team has brought to light during the past six months? We leave you now with this update. More information and more sources have come forward. Our investigation does not end here. We promise to continue asking the tough questions Andrea's mom wants answered. I'm Chief Investigative Reporter Tony Kovaleski. I thank you for joining us. Have a good night.